Hello, welcome to um, month two approximately of uh, quarantine, sort of, for uh, COVID-19. I am working on building wedge blocks for my Marquardt Charger biplane and uh, figured I would document some of the process. So this is a wedge block. This is a dash 239 wedge block. Um, these are 10 degree angles and they are a pain to cut in a saw because uh, your fingers get in the way. So I had to find a different way to do that and um, what I came up with, with several people's help, was a jig, which I will now show you. So this is my 10 degree jig and what you see here is a little 10 degree ramp on the inside there with all the holes in it. And then the edges are cut perfectly square. And this is a vacuum port. The idea is that your vacuum cleaner goes into that. And then these holes um, suck down with the vacuum's force and hold down the piece of work that you're working on, which looks a little bit like this. Doop. So you'd put a piece in like that, you would have all these holes covered but um, put a piece in like that. And when you apply the vacuum cleaner to this port, it sucks down and you get 14 PSI of holding power on this part without having to have any sort of physical clamp. So I don't have to have a clamp on the work piece, which is really handy. Um, and that has worked really well. The vacuum clamp is dead simple. It's just a bunch of holes and a hole in the side that the vacuum cleaner plugs into and a comparatively chilled, sealed chamber underneath all that. This is the 20 degree ramp, 20 degree jig. It's the exact same idea as the 10 degree jig, but it has a 20 degree ramp inside and it's got the same drilled holes and the vacuum port on the side. And that's just, this is a three quarter inch piece of tubing that I had lying around and it just happened to fit a particular vacuum fitting that I had that came with the router that I'm using over here. So here's the router partially set up with a camera to catch the action. And it's just a real basic router, but I've made this 12 inch square base for it out of uh, 3 8 inch polycarbonate, which allows it to run, Oops, that may be for one hand, allows it to run over the top of this and just plunge down and pick up the work piece that needs to be cut down. And then I'm using a piloted router bit. So this is a bearing here that allows it to run up against a wall. When the bearing hits the wall, the cutter only just, it just barely misses hitting that wall. So now what I'm going to do is um, make some wedges, basically. Let's see what I need to do here. So I'm working off the Marquardt charger plans. I've updated them a little bit with these hairlines that make it easier to read. Um, and so I've finished the 239 wedges that I need to make. I need to work on 241, 242, and 243 now. So that's the this size and this size and this size. The important angle on this is the 10 degree angle uh, because the uh, the wings are swept back 10 degrees, and uh, so all the bits and pieces have to meet up um, at a square angle, and so you need these little wedge blocks to be exactly 10 degrees to match the 10 degrees of the spar so that all of the, um, the compression tubes and the interplane strut fittings and the flying and landing wire fittings so that they all hit at uh, 90 degrees to the direction of path of travel. So to make these wedge blocks, I'm using pieces of off-cut spruce. This is, this is what you get when you order the uh, box of random ends from Aircraft Spruce or from Wix. Enough theory. Let's uh, make some wedge blocks. Nope, not four and three quarters, that's for sure.
because that right there is ugly. So, three and an eighth. Can I do three and an eighth? Sure can. Looks like this is a three and an eighth piece. <laughs> So, sort of a 10 degree angle, similar to a 10 degree angle. And now, because I'm going to do the 10 degree angle first, I need to cut this to length and cut it square, because this corner here is very important that this is square where it sits. Well, I didn't save too much. One of the downsides of the vacuum clamp is that uh, the surface has to be very clean or it won't clamp very tightly. And so for these three and an eighth pieces that are not the full four and three quarters width, which is what the, rig, the, the jig is designed for, I've got a spacer that just slips in there and keeps it mechanically fastened side to side, but also covers up all those vacuum holes. found is that sometimes I don't quite get all of the, uh, the little bits and pieces around corners, so I'm just using a chisel, not a terribly good chisel, to kind of shave that off and get it down to the same slope, which seems to work reasonably well. And I was having little triangular bits here where the circular cutter didn't get to, but I've started doing closer passes where I only do a half cutter width, and that gets rid of that for the most part. So, there's the 10 degree angle of a, what was it, 241 wedge block. But that gives you an idea of how the uh, jig works, how the vacuum clamp works, how the router works with the jig and the vacuum clamp. Um, and you can probably see how the 20 degree clamp would also work. <laughs>